The great strides in science and technology in the modern world, many of them were the result of extensive experimentation. Some of these took place within ethical and legal frameworks, allowing them to be well monitored and viewed by society as well-intentioned procedures. However, there is a world that people rarely learn about in time, and often only comes to light when the final product or procedure, the one that is commercialized or applied under the protection of law and institutions, is delivered and administered to those who can finance it. Throughout history, an innumerable series of experiments have been conducted, and we only find out about them through painstaking investigations that reveal various forms of abuse. Most of these experiments were conducted in secret, while a few withstood social criticisms. This is the case of two failed experiments carried out at different times in history, by two radically different cultures, which perhaps, by chance, fortunately, had an unfavorable outcome. All of this is the result of the ambition to dominate a nature that, on many occasions, is unbeatable against human beings. In 1940, the Japanese government was working intensively on the large-scale production of weapons that would allow it to extend its control over Asian waters. For this, the Ministry of Armament and Ammunition, in collaboration with several private companies, coordinated and supervised the creation of weapons intended for use by the Japanese armed forces. One of the private companies worked closely with the Imperial University of Tokyo, to the point that it masked its identity through individual efforts of its major shareholders with the teaching and research team. Their goal was to harness the enormous marine biodiversity along the coasts of Japan, to take advantage of the genetic characteristics of some animals and make them as resilient as submarines or warships. Masaru Fujita a professor of bioengineering at the university was the only academic figure involved in the case whose identity is known. In fact, after the surrender in the Second World War, the Japanese government disclosed part of the research material, photographs of military tests, and recordings of Professor Fujita commenting on the experiments that were carried out. Among these experiments, the most prominent and relatively successful one is the mutation of starfish. By increasing their size through a hormonization process, when they reach a certain threshold of development in their limbs, they take on shapes and hardness that can be pruned and fertilized, much like the growth of plants to take on different forms. In one of the recordings, Professor Fujita comments during a private conference on the mechanism and process of military use of these creatures. ベータアルファエタドサの粒ニットの研究により特定の方向を取るならこれらは増加を許容し同様に、ここで私たちを結ぶ目的に対して理想的なサイズを記録的な時間で達成する可能性があります。私はチームによって作成されたレポートを各自の机に
There is not much documentation about this experiment, except for some files leaked on the emerging internet in 2003. These revealed a series of files confiscated by the German Federal Police from the now defunct company, Human Detect, which was founded in 1996 as an attempt to unify German interests for bioengineering development post-Cold War. This company showed a keen interest in creating life from unconventional substances, particularly the possibility of generating sentient organisms from plastic, which they foresaw would become a waste plague in the future. While the initial attempts at producing individualized microorganisms did not achieve the desired success, they strangely noticed that by replicating part of the human genome with a special plastic substance processed in their industrial centers, they could generate human body parts. These parts responded to certain external stimuli, obeying some kind of neural processing center within the plastic layers themselves. With a probable research center in the city of Bielefeld, the company only remained in biotechnology experimentation until the year 2000, when a serious accident with the machinery and a lawsuit from one of the workers exposed part of the company's secret work. As a result, it was dismantled in a matter of weeks. In 2003, a few weeks after the document leak, testimonies surfaced from people who photographed strange bodies that had been taken to a landfill near the border with Poland. These bodies bore a striking resemblance to those recorded in the leaked files, and, in the words of workers and onlookers who approached the landfill, these figures seemed to have life. They were observed making facial gestures, emitting certain moans and murmurs. Some reacted to stimuli such as tapping with rods and showed reluctance to direct contact with the sun. 